In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create a falling letters effect in Blender. As you can see, hundreds of small pieces are falling here from the sky, very much like how a parachute comes down. They will slowly gather on the ground in an orderly fashion, and create some text of your choice, maybe your channel name, or your company logo. We'll primarily use rigid body physics to create this. So let us start with a blank new scene. We'll delete this cube, and instead, we'll add one text field. We'll add our own text here, instead of this default text, maybe some name, or a logo, so go to the edit mode. Delete this existing text with backspace, and add your own text. Let us go with this word, Blender. Now back to the object mode, you may like to decorate this text by changing its font, or its color, before we convert it. So go to this text tab. Here, change this horizontal alignment, to center, and vertical alignment also to center. And if you want to change its font, or its style, you have to expand this font section. From here, you can easily change the font as you like. Let's say we go with this font, and open it. Then you can change the font size here. Next, we would like to add some thickness to this flat text. So expand this geometry section. In this extrude field, we have to enter a small value, maybe 0.01. That will add a small thickness to our text. In the next step, we'll convert this text into a mesh object, and then separate out each letter from here. So go to the object menu, and then under convert, select the mesh option. Let us then go to the edit mode. We have to ensure that there are no duplicate vertices, so press A, to select all. Then go to the mesh menu, then merge, and select merge by distance. Here you can see that some vertices are removed. Now again go to mesh, then select separate, and separate by loose parts. So each letter of this word will be converted to a separate object, and listed here. Let us go back to the object mode. We have to group these letters into a separate collection, for easy handling. So select them together. Now right click, and select move to collection. Select new collection. Let us call this collection as text. Click on OK, and all the mesh letters will be grouped under this new collection which is text. Now go to the object menu, then set origin, and origin to geometry. So each letter will have its origin and its geometrical center. Then again go to the object menu, and select shade flat. So our first step is now complete. But we have to also cut these mesh objects into numerous small pieces, instead of these letters. Let us start with this first letter, which is letter B. We can see that its height is approximately double of its width. So we'll like to cut it into 15 pieces along the x-axis, and say 30 pieces along its height. For this operation, we'll use a specific method that we have discussed earlier in another tutorial. It makes use of a Python script, and it is very handy to cut objects into any number of equal pieces. The tutorial link is given below, you can check that if you are not familiar with this Python script. So let us open a text editor here. Then click on New. This is the place where we can write any Python code. We'll paste a script like this. For this entire code, please refer to the link given in the video description. You have to just change these two values, they define the number of segments in each dimension after the cut. Let us go for 15 segments in the X dimension, and 30 in the Y. Now we can run the script. It will take some time to complete. Once done, go back to the 3D viewport. We can see that the letter B is divided perfectly into several pieces. We have to do the same for all other letters. But the number of cuts will depend on the letters. For example, here we'll go for 3 cuts in the X dimension, and 30 cuts in the Y. Similarly for this letter E, we may like to go for 15 cuts in the X dimension, and 20 cuts in the Y. You have to select one letter at a time, and the script will cut that selected letter. But one word of caution, the script may give one or two wrong results, due to floating point approximation, you need to fix that manually. And also ensure that the origin for each letter is set to its geometrical center. Once you complete the cut for all the letters, you will get a result like this, where each letter is replaced by a bunch of small pieces. And they are grouped under this text collection, the same collection where we had kept our original text objects. But some of these pieces may not be actually visible here. For example, if we take this piece, it is pointing towards some blank space or void. This is not a real mesh object, it is just created by the script, 
with zero length dimensions. So you may like to delete these invisible pieces, keeping only the visible ones over here. Let us select all the visible objects like this. Then right-click and select Move to Collection. Then New Collection. Let us move them to a new collection called Blocks. And hit OK. So all these pieces will be grouped under this new Blocks collection. And we don't need this one, so right-click and select Delete Hierarchy. Now everything will be removed. Let us then get to the actual action. We want these pieces to fall from the sky. But what we'll actually do is the opposite. We'll make them fly away into the sky by creating a negative gravitational field over here and later we'll play it in the reverse mode so it will look like as if they are really falling from the sky. In order to make that happen, we have to convert all these pieces into rigid bodies. So select any one object from here and go to the Physics tab. Enable the Rigid Body properties. We have to ensure that this type field is selected as active. Now we'll apply this same settings to all other pieces that are present here. So select all these objects together like this. We have to ensure that this piece is in yellow, which means it is the active selection. Now go to the object menu, then under rigid body, select copy from active, and Blender will apply the same settings to all these objects. Let us then go to the scene properties and expand this gravity section. We have to enter a positive value over here, and it has to be a very small value. We can enter 0 0.02. Since this is a positive value, all these pieces will move up, instead of falling down, as the gravity will now work upward. And later we'll play it in reverse. But with these settings, all the pieces will move upward at the same pace together, that won't look very good. We want them to leave the ground at a random time, or at a random frame number for a better effect. So if you go to the Physics tab, we have this dynamic property, which controls the time frame when an object would take part into the rigid body physics, so we have to insert a random keyframe on this dynamic field property, for each of these objects. You'll probably understand this better if you are well versed with rigid body physics in Blender. If not, you can refer to our foundation level tutorial on this topic where we have discussed all rigid body settings with suitable examples, the link is given in the video description below. Now, there is no direct way in rigid body physics to keyframe this field at random for each of these objects separately, we have to take help of a Python script here, just for this purpose. So let us open a text editor. Delete this existing one, and click on new. We'll paste a code here, like this. You can get this code in the video description below. You have to then change these two numbers, as suitable for your scene. They define the frame range within which the rigid body properties will be enabled, for each of the blocks at random. Let us now run the script. And go back to the 3D viewport. Let us extend the scene length, maybe to 600. Now go to the scene properties and expand this rigid body world. Here, we have a section called cache. We can bake our rigid body physics here. But before that, let us change these substeps values to 2. They will reduce the accuracy, but the baking will be done much faster. The accuracy is not very important for a scene like this one, but you can always increase these values later, before the final render. Let us change this end frame number as well. Then start the baking. It will show the progress here. Once complete, we can run the animation. You won't see any action until frame number 51. After that, the blocks will move up slowly from the ground. This may look good, but we can achieve a better result if we add some randomness to this upward movement by introducing one force field. Let us go to the start frame. We need to first ensure that the origins of these blocks are right at their geometrical centers. So select the blocks together. Then in the object menu, under set origin, set origin to geometry. Now go to the add menu. We'll add one force field. You can add any one force of your choice. Let us go with a vortex force. It will create a spiraling effect on the blocks around the z-axis. In the physics tab, here we have the settings for our force field. Let us change the shape parameter to point. You can also increase the strength value for a bigger force. And this seed field determines an arbitrary start point for the noise texture that is used by this vortex force for a random pattern. You can use any value here. 
We have used 77 in our experiment. Now, this will create a powerful whirl effect on the blocks, but it will also try to move them down below the ground. So let us move it up slightly, in order to lower its effect in the ground region. We'll go to the Object Properties tab, and move it up, by say 0.5 unit. Let us also add a plane over here, which will work as a floor, both for a decorative purpose, and to support our physics as well. It will be a rigid body, so that the blocks are restricted from falling down, below the ground level. So go to the Add menu, and add one plane. Let us increase its scale factor, in the X dimension, in order to cover the text sufficiently. We need to also ensure that the floor, or the plane is right below the text blocks. So go to the front view mode, and then zoom in. We can see that the plane needs to be moved down, by a small amount. Let us enter, 0 0.015. Not a magic figure, we just know it already. The setup is done, now we need to enable this plane as a passive rigid body. So go to the physics tab and enable its rigid body properties. We have to change this type field, to passive type. We are ready to bake our simulation for the final time. But before that, we need to clear the existing cache in the scene tab. So here, click on delete all bakes, and then bake all dynamics. The progress is as usual displayed here. Once it is complete, we can play the animation and verify the result. The blocks will start moving up, after frame number 50. You'll see a spiraling effect, as we have added the vortex force, and later we'll run it in the reverse mode, so it will look like the blocks are falling from the sky. You can reverse it in a video sequence editor, like VSE, that comes with Blender. Let us stop it here. Then hide the vortex force, and play it in the reverse mode. So this time, the blocks will fall from the sky in a spiraling fashion, and they'll slowly gather on the ground, to make our desired letters. We have used a vortex force, which is creating this spiral, but you can experiment with a different type of force, or reduce its strength, to get a variation in the way the blocks move. We are all done with the physics part. Now the last thing which is pending is, we have to set up some suitable materials for our objects. Let us turn on the rendered view mode, and also hide this floor. So you can see that the text is now looking like a single continuous object, the blocks that we have created, are not clearly visible, they got joined together. If you want it this way, we are good, but otherwise you can add some bevel to each of the blocks, so that they are visible separately, as we saw in the solid view mode. But we have to do some cleanup or some transformation before that. So let us go to the solid view mode. Now select all the blocks together. Then we have to go to the edit mode. First go to the select menu, and select all. Then under mesh, select the option of convex hull. Let us go back to the object mode. Now select any one block over here, and go to the modifiers tab. We have to add a bevel modifier. Let us switch over to the percent option. You can use something like 15%. And the number of segments can be 5. We'll now copy this modifier for all our text blocks. So select them together, and go to the Object menu. Under Link or Transfer Data, select Copy Modifiers. Deselect everything, and you can see that a bevel is added for all the text blocks. But some blocks, like this one, may have a problem. You can rectify it, by reducing this percentage value. Do this manual fix, wherever there is a problem. Once the cleanup is done, and it looks good, go to the Rendered View mode. In the Materials tab, create a new material. We can change this base color, let us go with a shade of blue color. Now select all the blocks together. Then go to the Object menu, under Link or Transfer Data, Link Materials. So all the blocks will get the same blue material. Let us now bring back our floor plane and select it. Then create another new material. We'll use a textured material for this one, so click on this yellow icon and select Image Texture. We'll open this and select a chocolate texture that we have downloaded beforehand. Now, let us also reduce the specular value, so that we have less amount of reflection from the floor. Our objects are now ready. The materials are set up and the physics settings are also perfect. We can now play it for the final time. So let us go to frame number 550. We don't have any blocks present in the scene at this moment, so we are good to start the animation in the reverse mode. 
The blocks will now start falling from the sky. We have to also ensure that we have correct settings for the shadow. So in the light tab, you need to enable this contact shadow option. It will then result in a better shadow effect when the blocks reach the floor. So this way you can easily create falling letters that gather on the ground and create a text, which you can use for your channel promo or for the intro of your animation. And do experiment with the force field because a simple gravitation alone may be more suitable for a scene or gravitation with a turbulence force may be perfect or sometimes this spiraling effect will yield the best results. The basic funda remains same, you have to only play with the force field settings. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.